Hi, I'm Hamish. I'm Peggy. I'm Storm. And kia ora, I'm Rose. And today we're going to talk to you guys about biochemistry and what it's like studying biochemistry at the um, University of Otago. Now, I think that the title biochemistry sounds a little misleading because it sounds like it's a lot of chemistry, right? Biochemistry is not just chemistry. It is more like molecular or cellular biology. You know, I don't want to bash chemistry too much because I was a proud chemistry student back in the day, but I would say that biochemistry is chemistry, but in a more fascinating and interesting context. Mm -hmm. What I mean by this is instead of memorizing like massive reaction schemes and the structure of teeny tiny chemicals, instead what we're doing is we're looking at cells, we're looking at DNA, RNA, proteins, we're looking at how cells communicate and metabolism, and we're also looking at like what happens when things go wrong and we get diseases like cancer. Um, so I've been told that you guys are doing an exam at the end of this year on gene expression. They just had one yesterday. They did? Oh, yesterday. awesome. Yeah, so you guys are all very much experts on gene expression and the process of DNA being transcribed into RNA and RNA being translated into protein. Um, and the really cool thing is this is actually a core concept of biochemistry. It even has a fancy name. It's called the Central Dogma of Molecular Biology, um, which is a bit of a mouthful. But really what this means is that this is a very important concept in biochemistry. And therefore, you guys are already studying a little bit of biochemistry here in Level 2 Biology. Um, yeah, so then another thing that we wanted to point out is that Biochemistry is a central science and it relates to so many different areas of science. So whatever it is that you're interested in, there probably is a little bit of biochemistry wrapped up in it. Like, for example, you know, I hope that everybody here has seen Friends and Ross from Friends is a paleontologist. And as you can see, paleontology relates to biochemistry. So Ross probably had to know a little bit about biochemistry as well. I'm doing a Bachelor of Science majoring in biochemistry and minor in microbiology. Um, I really enjoyed biology and chemistry in high school and so I decided to combine them into a degree. Um, going to university, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in particular and biochemistry sounded interesting and it's a broad subject that provides many different career pathways to choose from, for example, working with food, the environment, animals or in medical settings. I actually have a massive secret that I have to come clean about. I have really, it's burning me up inside, I have to tell you all. I am not actually a biochemistry major. I know, like what a twist, it's such a scandal, but I am actually doing a degree called biomedical science and I major in infection and immunity, which is like immunology. And throughout my degree, I have really fallen in love with biochemistry and especially the biochemistry department at the university. It really is the best department, um, no contest. And I've also been really amazed by how my two passions, biochemistry and immunology, really overlap and how getting to learn both of them has really strengthened my understanding of them each. Um, yeah, so now next year I'm hoping to, after I complete this degree, to do an honours degree in biochemistry. Yeah, I decided to do a major in pharmacology and I completed that last year, but that wasn't enough for me. So I decided, well, I'm going to go back. I enjoyed biochemistry in lower levels, so I'm going to finish that and do that as a second major. I'm majoring in biochemistry and minoring in plant biotechnology. But I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, biochemistry was not the obvious path for me at all. In fact, when I was sitting where you were sitting, I knew two things. One, I loved biology, and two, I did not like chemistry <laughs> at all. And I thought biochemistry was mainly chemistry, so it wasn't even on my radar. Anyway, in my first year of university, I had to do a biochemistry paper as a requirement for my majors at the time, and those were genetics and microbiology. And spoiler alert, um, biochemistry was not at all what I thought it was. In fact, it was so much better. So I chose to switch to biochemistry because I'm fascinated by how the living world works. And like, we can thank David Attenborough for that one. He is a legend and an icon. And um, that's what biochemistry is, right? It's the mechanisms which underpin the living world. So it made sense for me. Next year, I, like Rose, intend on doing honors with the biochemistry department and would one day love to go into research. So it can be a little confusing with all the different titles. So a bachelor's degree is normally three years and that's undergrad. So that's what we're all doing now. Um, and then you can do a one year on top of that postgrad honours and that's just one year and it's a mix of research and also taking papers doing exams kind of like you would be doing in undergrad. You can also do a two year masters so you can go straight from your undergrad to a two year masters or from undergrad to a one year honours and then if you get an honours or a masters you can then go into a PhD which is about three or five years and then people can call you doctor which is pretty cool. 
So these are the required papers for doing a biochemistry degree at the University of Otago. Um, there is, I believe, 11 on there, and to get a degree you need 20 total to make up 360 points. So there's room to wiggle around in there. There's nine, and it says uh, say, up 90 points may be taken outside of science. So you can combine it. I believe Rose did this too. She took some English papers, so you can do uh, history papers as well and tie it into your science degree, and you still get to pass with a Bachelor of Science. But the other thing that's really important about this is the name doesn't say it all. So I did pharmacology for my degree, for example, but there's no pharmacology level sorry, no pharmacology at 100 level. I learned that all within the biochemistry paper there. The other thing is now, in third year, even though I am doing a biochemistry papers flattened through nothing else, it's still tied in quite heavily to the different departments like the genetics and microbiology. It's, it's really everything. Just because it says one thing, it, you, in reality you really get a lot more. Once you get into it, they have so many people that help explain things like I met with a lecturer a few days ago and she helped talk through all my different options and advised me on what, what would be good for me and things like that. So, you know, you're not going to be left stranded. They really do look after you and, and make sure you know what you're doing. Um, so the day-to-day -day of a biochemistry degree. We have lectures where we learn a lot of interesting content in a big lecture theatre, kind of like a movie theatre actually. Um, we also have tutorials in third year where we work in small groups and collaborate. There are lots of cool things to explore in the labs as shown here. Um, first year biochemistry labs focus on the fundamental techniques to help prep you for later years. But things get really exciting in second and third years. In these labs we have isolated proteins from cells. So this year we purified phycoerythrin from red algae the protein that was passed around just before. And you can see the pink phycoerythrin in the tubes there. Um, and we look at the protein structures as shown before by Hamish. So we do some computer analysis as well. Uh, we also work with real human cancer cells and where we isolated the DNA from these cells. And it was really cool that we actually got to see the DNA floating around in the tube. Um, you can also experiment on your cells in the biochemistry labs if you want to. Um, you can test your lactate levels in response to exercise or your lac glucose levels after eating. So overall, the labs strengthen your technical skills and connect with the concepts you learn in class, which really helps with your understanding. And importantly, they are fun, something new to experience. Well, first of all, the staff are super supportive and very accommodating to all the needs of their students. They genuinely care about your learning and your well-being. Uh, and the other cool thing is, since biochemistry is a central science, as you study it, you meet a variety of people studying a variety of different things. And as you progress through the papers, you actually get to form a bit of a tight-knit community. I mean, look at us all here. Um, so what do we actually want? you to take away from this presentation. So overall, biochemistry is a wide and diverse science that is in a variety of different disciplines. And research in the field of biochemistry is important in both seeking out and applying knowledge to both understand and improve the world around us. Uh, in high school, I took biology, chemistry. I didn't do physics in my final year, but I did do it in year 12. And I did English and statistics and graphics, interestingly, to the side. So that set me up quite well for the first year papers I found. Uh, yeah, in year 13, I took biology, chemistry, English, history, and I'm blanking on what the last one was, maybe <laughs> media studies. I'm not sure it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I think the main thing is Obviously what you do in high school is important, but the lecturers and the tutors and the people at university are prepared to, even if you know you didn't take physics, but then you need to take a physics paper at uni. Like I never did um, year 13 physics, but I did a physics paper at university. They do really try to get you up to level with everybody else. So even if you haven't taken chemistry at all, maybe you're just taking biology, you can still do biochemistry and you might still enjoy it regardless. Um, so I did biology, chemistry, calculus, English and photography and like Rose and Storm said, like um, first year they kind of teach the same as the year 13 biology and chemistry and it does build from it so even if you didn't take 
the papers, you'll still get taught well in first year to help. Like like Pay said, they catch you up pretty quickly if you haven't done it. The, generally the first few lectures are very introductory and they then start easing you into stuff that you would have covered in high school. Um, and then it does build on from there. So it's not the end of the world if you haven't missed it, but it is quite beneficial to have done it. Um, I, I went straight into a flat. From I took a couple of gap years out of high school, um, worked in the bakery, a terrible sleep schedule now because of it, but <laughs> I, I ate well, but yeah, coming, coming down here. <laughs> but yeah, c coming down here, it's, you know, it, it's a good change of breath. And if you're not sure about what you want to do, have a gap year. Just think about it. That's the best thing I can recommend. So you can become a lab tech, for example. So you can work within laboratories and help perform experiments there. You can get into research, where you can conduct research. Um, for my degree, tying it into pharmacology as well, I could work in any pharmaceutical company in the world developing drugs. So yeah, it's a really, really broad thing. And just because you do a biochemistry degree doesn't mean you don't have the skill set to work in other related fields. Um, yeah, you can also work in agriculture research, or like helping to develop better crops, for example, and also do testing type of jobs in labs, so maybe like milk testing in Fonterra. Um, yeah, also another really cool career path is you can actually go into communications with science or you can work as an advisor in a government policy regarding scientific matters or environmental concerns. So you can go into policy or even patenting of new technologies. So you're really not limited with where you can go since biochemistry is such a wide ranging science. You can really dip your toes in a lot of different areas. Yeah, um, just to add on to what Storm was saying, the other day we had a careers evening and they had people talking to us about what they do with their degrees and there was someone who had done a degree in genetics and is now one of the advisors for the Prime Minister as to like um, vaccine response and COVID and all of that. So it really can take you anywhere and I think the best advice that I've been given, um, which was from uh, someone in the bio department last year, her name's Kay, she's sadly not there anymore, but anyway, um, she told me that it doesn't really matter what you major in, as long as you're doing what you love and you just follow that path, that's all that matters. So, you know, if you major in genetics, micro, if you want to do an English degree, whatever it is, as long as you love it, that's really that, all that matters. And it also depends on like what you want to do after your bachelor's. So if you want to do like research or go into something higher, then maybe postgrad would be helpful. Yeah, again, building on what Pei you said, you don't have to go into postgrad after you get your bachelor. There are plenty of career opportunities all around. Some of them aren't going to be directly related to science. It can be indirect, like communications or... I mean, even going off to be a teacher, which is another option I've considered, like, you're really not limited at all. If you want to go into more specialised careers, like research or drug development, then postgraduate science is probably very useful.